Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to talk about the clever engineering of McLaren's roof scoops and we're also going to talk about the clever engineering of this vehicle right here. This is the McLaren 620R which is very much so a track car uh, that you can legally drive to the track. So it was designed to be a track car uh, but also designed to be road legal whereas you know many cars they try to be road legal and also operate well on a track. This is kind of the opposite. It is purely designed for the track. Oh, and hey, you can drive it on the road legally so you can get to that track. Now, as you can see, I drove all the way to Los Angeles because I heard the weather here was dry and I wanted to test out a $300,000 sports car in some nice, lovely, warm, dry weather. And so it's cold and wet. Fantastic. So let's talk about this roof scoop. First of all, what is it? Well, this is an air intake. Not all vehicle roof scoops are going to be used for an engine air intake, but that is what it is for this McLaren 620R. So intake for the engine, and you can actually see as you go inside of the vehicle, what's interesting if you, you know, follow this roof line here and follow that back to the engine, wait a minute, there's a disconnect. So you actually still do have a rear window there. And the way they do that, is here you can see the intake right above your head as a driver and then it splits left and right for the two banks of the engine so this is a v8 engine and it passes that air back down through here into your air boxes before moving over there you can see the throttle for each individual side there's your intake manifold before it passes into the engine after traveling through that engine on the 600 LT, you'll remember there is a top exit exhaust. Here it actually comes down and comes out the back and you don't have that exhaust interfering at all with this wing back here. So this roof mounted intake here is standard for the US market 620R and it replaces the intake which is going to be mounted behind the driver's side window. On both sides you'll have the air intakes mounted about right there. So replacing it, putting it up top in the center. So what's the purpose? What's the advantage of changing it uh, from the intake back there to the intake right here, right above your head? You can see that carbon fiber. Very cool. So what's the actual advantage of doing so? Well, really, the true reason why this is done, I got to speak with McLaren 620R chief engineer and discuss this vehicle uh, in great detail. And the reason why this is done is purely for the driver's enjoyment. I mean, it's to be loud, have loud intake uh, engine sounds right beside your face. So, you know, I think today uh, a lot of people kind of cringe at like piping in artificial engine sounds or using the speakers to create artificial engine sounds. And in this case, McLaren said, oh you want to hear your engine well, we'll put the intake literally directly above your head i mean look how close this intake is to my head uh, so you can get all kinds of engine sounds now just because the main purpose is for the driver to get some nice sounds within the cabin doesn't mean there actually isn't some very cool engineering that goes into this so there are some advantages of moving the location uh, from over here on the driver's side to up here above the roof and one of the big advantages is that you can get very clean air and so it's not really dependent also on the yaw of the vehicle, meaning as that vehicle rotates and turns out on the track, you've always got that clean direct path for airflow, whereas these on this side right here can be a bit dependent on the car's rotation as it goes into that airflow. So here you're ensuring you always have a direct path right into the front of the car for that airflow. And also, as you can see, it's slightly elevated and it's pushed out forward a little bit uh, from the vehicle. And so this is ensuring, you know, as the air gets closer and closer to the vehicle, that air speed gets closer and closer to the vehicle speed, meaning the two don't have relative motion between them. So you want really fast moving airflow, meaning airflow that isn't influenced by this vehicle as it's driving through. And so you get that by elevating it up and sticking it out a little bit so you can get that direct clean airflow uh, always and not have to worry about that boundary layer attaching to the surface of the vehicle and slowing down that airflow as it enters. Now for naturally aspirated vehicles, for example, like the McLaren F1, when you have a roof scoop like this, you can actually use it as a ram air effect and essentially give yourself a bit of free turbocharging where you get a bit of increased pressure from forcing that air into this intake uh, as you drive through the air at a high speed. And as a result, you increase the pressure within that intake and you give yourself a bit of free boost, meaning you get a little bit above atmospheric pressure within your engine and so you can create additional power. Now this of course is a turbocharged engine so it's a 3.8 liter twin turbo engine meaning here you're not actually relying on that ram effect as you drive through the air 
actually you're relying on those turbochargers to suck in the air. So you have a suction occurring right here rather than ramming that air in. However, it does give you a bit of you know less resistance by traveling at a higher speed. You've got less resistance towards sucking that air in because you're driving through that air and forcing it into that intake. But main purpose being uh, you know getting that sound within the cabin because regardless of whether this intake is mounted up top or mounted here on the side, the engine's going to be making the same power. That's ultimately limited by your cylinder pressures and those cylinder pressures are going to be, you know, you're going to have turbochargers uh, that maintain that exact ideal cylinder pressure for peak performance for the vehicle which isn't dependent on where do we put this intake. The aerodynamics involved are also pretty interesting. So as you can see, it kind of contours to the roof here and it has that teardrop shape as it comes back and kind of just disappears into the roof line. And so ultimately the goal is if you're gonna put the intake up top, you wanna make sure that you don't change your drag coefficient all that much. And so they're minimizing their change on the drag coefficient by giving it that shape that just contours along that roof with that teardrop. And as you can see from the front, Actually, it's wider at the base and then it gets narrower towards the top and you can see it has this really wide, flat shape. So ultimately, you're gonna have some area that you want for intake to go in and you can create different shapes. It could be tall, it could be a circle, it could be a square. And so the reason why it's this wide, flat shape is so that you have the same frontal area but you minimize the drag coefficient. So if you had a really tall intake right here, you'd increase the drag coefficient of the car and you'd worsen the aerodynamics of the car. So by keeping it wide and flat close to the car, you keep that drag coefficient very similar. Now you might wonder is that roof scoop going to impact your downforce? Is it going to impact the aerodynamics of this rear wing because now you're putting this object uh, higher above the car? Uh, and so actually, you know, between the two models, the one with the side intake versus the roof mounted intake, there's not really a difference in downforce. And the reason being is because this wing is so elevated. You can see it's raised up quite a bit. And so it's raised up above that dirty air that could be coming off the back of this and ensuring that it's within clean air because it's so high up off the back of the vehicle to maximize downforce and give you the full use of the entire wing. Now on the 600 LT, you actually had top exit exhaust and then the wing itself was a bit lower and that lower wing, the center portion of the wing actually wasn't doing much for your downforce. And that's because the roof of the vehicle uh, was you know, much above it. And so you didn't really have clean airflow for the center of the wing. You had that clean airflow on the sides of the wing uh, from the shape of the vehicle and how that airflow came back to it. On this one, because it's so elevated and you also don't have those top exit exhausts influencing the airflow back here at all, you have downforce across the entire wing uh, and this produces significantly more downforce. Speaking of aerodynamics, this has very similar downforce to the racing version of the car, uh, the 570S GT4. And so this is producing about 408 pounds of downforce at 155 miles per hour. You can also see these front dive planes. Uh, so very similar to the racing version, except these have a rounded edge. Uh, so they're a bit more pedestrian friendly. And then also to keep it road legal and allow yourself to drive to the track, they incorporated a brake light uh, within the rear wing. Now on a wet day like today, you might wonder what about rain and debris? And so, you know, you do have a nice direct airflow uh, for that rain to enter directly into that intake. And so there's a couple things to mitigate any problems here. First of all, they've got a grid within this uh, in order to catch anything like leaves that might get uh, pulled in, or, you know, it, for the rain itself, there are gonna be drain holes as that water works its way back. And so actually, you know, rain is a challenge regardless of where you mount that intake. Um, so you've got it up top, you're gonna have that direct rain going inside, and then if you have these intakes, actually you'll have the water moving along the body of the car and then passing into those intakes. So either way, you have to incorporate those drain holes to allow that rain to escape out from the intake. Now, don't worry, I didn't forget to ask the important question. So you could call this a roof scoop, or you could call it a snorkel. So. What is the fording depth of a McLaren 620R and is it better if you use the roof scoop versus the side mounts? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't make a difference. Actually, the limiting factor uh, if you're trying to go through some deep water is actually the underbody uh, because it has such a flat underbody for aerodynamic purposes. Uh, as you were to approach some deep water, basically just picks up the front of the vehicle because it has that flat underbody turns it into a boat, you hydroplane, you don't have any steering, no good. Uh, so yeah, you don't wanna go in deep water with this vehicle. Yet that's what the world wants me to do with it. I mean, look at this weather, what am I supposed to do? This thing's on Trofeo R's 
and they're supposed to be nice and toasty get a little grip now one of the things i love that mclaren does is they put a very large emphasis on weight reduction so i mean you can just see the exposed carbon in here look at that tub underneath uh, you know this is look at these seats right here these bucket seats these carbon bucket seats so it's a fairly stripped out interior you actually do have a six point uh, racing harness as well as the standard three point you know seat belts uh, for road legality you do have an airbag of course uh, and that airbag uh, you're not going to be able to deactivate it but it won't impact your safety out on the track so the overall curb weight of this vehicle including fluids uh, we're at a little over 3,000 pounds and this is making 611 horsepower so incredibly quick 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds but I think more impressively 0 to 124 miles per hour or 200 kilometers per hour in 8.1 seconds so Lexus LC 500 going you know 0 to 60 in about 5 seconds versus this is going from 60 to 120 in about 5 seconds and that's same amount of time so wildly quick uh, just keeps on pulling thanks to being really light and having quite a bit of power now if you were not convinced that this is in fact a track vehicle uh, that is also happens to be road legal uh, I present to you the interior this is your storage right here that's all you get there is no cup holder when was the last time you're in a vehicle that didn't even have one single cup holder pretty wild so I will close this out, giving you some interior noise driving around so you can kind of get a sense for what this intake sounds like. so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.